This is a tough one. This is a tough one. If I can land this judgment, the game is very over, though. The old tongues are spoken well, I can judgment plus this. Hey everyone, Raptor Spank here, and today we have On the Grind, the show where I cover a deck I'm playing in ranked. I'll break down the deck, some flex spots, and we'll go over some basic mulligans, and then we'll put the deck through some ranked matches and review how we do afterwards. So, what are we covering this week? We're covering something a little bit spicy that I mentioned a couple meta checks ago, and uh, some people are running it with Jarvan lately, but I'm playing Taric Rally, or as I'm calling it, the Golden Challenge. Essentially, uh, the basic concept of this deck, the core core competency, shall we say, is the Taric Golden Aegis combo. So Golden Aegis has gained a lot of popularity as a rally spell lately because rather than Relentless Pursuit, despite the one extra mana that it costs, you give barrier to your unit so you can attack a little more safely. However, the big difference between Golden Aegis and Relentless Pursuit is that Golden Aegis targets, which allows us to use it on Taric, who will then copy it onto the unit that he supports, which essentially gives you two rallies off the one spell. So that's the basic premise of the deck, is that it's kind of the most busted Taric has ever been. Now, a number of people have been playing this with Jarvan, but personally, I find Garen to be a slightly more solid option, because Garen can really, really take over a game if you let him. And just in general, I, I kind of feel like his his champion spell, having that huge board wipe uh, blowout card, is just worth a little more impact than Cataclysm is. But there's two different ways to build the deck, and Jarvan is a reasonable option. But essentially, it's a mid-range deck with that little combo core, and you're just going to try to outvalue your opponent using things like Golden Aegis and a number of Challenger units to kill your opponent's stuff without losing your own and getting a bunch of free attacks off of it. So first off, the champion package, we have three copies of Taric. As I mentioned, that's kind of the core of the deck is his combo with Golden Aegis. So obviously we have three copies of him. And essentially what he does is that whenever you swing with him, he copies the last spell that was cast on just him. And then he copies it onto whoever he's supporting. So that's why the Golden Aegis combo works so well, is that since it targets a single unit, which in this case would be Taric, it can be copied by him onto another unit. You can also get random value out of Taric with a number of other cards like Pale Cascade and Sharp uh, Sight that we have in the deck, even um, without having Golden Aegis to go with him. But just in general, he's a reasonably statted unit that just synergizes with that with our deck in a, in a number of ways. And giving tough can be really good with our challengers as well. So just a lot of good uh, advantages, and we do have a number of things that target our own units that allow us to level up Taric very quickly, including, surprise, surprise, Concerted Strike actually does count as targeting two of your own allies, so that's a very good way to level him up. Although, we really don't care that much if Taric does level up, he's mostly there just for that broken combo, so he's a, he's a decent card that just facilitates everything we're looking to do. And his champion spell is not too bad either. Blessing of Targon can be really good, especially if we use it on a Taric and then Taric copies it onto something else. It can be really good with our other champion, Garen, too, for just making him even harder to kill. So, all in all, he Taric's a well-rounded champion that gives us access to a lot of important and powerful uh, combos or abilities. And then we have the three copies of Garen. Again, the big thing with Garen is that he can really take over a game if you let him. And essentially, he can really benefit from those multiple attacks, because if we can have Taric and Garen out and then cast a Golden Aegis, we can actually level up Garen right then and there, even if he hasn't struck yet. And we can do it fairly safely because of the fact that he'll get barrier from that Golden Aegis. And then also, he has regen, so that's a really good way to break things open against other mid-range decks, is that damage that happens to Garen isn't going to stick, so they have to kill him right then and there, or else he's going to be back up to full health, so that can be very brutal. And as I mentioned, his champion spell is really, really good. If you catch your opponent with their pants down, a judgment can instant level up your Garen, or gain you a bunch of life off of something like the Fangs, and just blow out your entire opponent's board if they make a risky attack. So, I really love uh, the champion spell, people don't really play around Judgment because it's such an expensive spell and nobody really runs main deck versions of it, so a lot of times people will be caught off guard by the champion spell. 
Now, looking at the follower package, we start off with a Demacia Classic, three copies of Fleet Feather Tracker. Um, we have a lot of ways to benefit off Challenger in this deck, or just essentially setting up the right uh, blocks for us. And the fact that we are going to look to Golden Aegis means that even something like Fleet Feather Tracker that might not be able to kill its unit, you can protect it with that Golden Aegis, so it protects your other units while not dying itself. And just in general, it's a really good one drop that can do up to two damage. So, I mean, that's really, really strong. And we do have a number of buff spells to keep it alive through attack. So, we really do rely on Challenger to just kind of break the symmetry in mid range matchups, especially. And then just having a one drop unit's really good for dealing with some more aggressive decks. And then we have three copies of Mountain Goat. I've seen some people run Bright Steel Protector instead, but I personally like Mountain Goat because A, it'll help us level up our Taric. It can increase the damage output of a number of spells. If we have nothing else, we can always use it on Taric and have it copied onto something else. And it's really, really good in the aggro matchup because it's a two drop that can trade effectively with a lot of things, but it can block stuff like Sand Soldier without dying and still get generating a gem and then the gem can heal it to allow it to block another sand soldier which with lucian azir's prevalence right now that's actually fairly relevant and then you can always use that gem to power up other units it's good for like a screeching dragon for increasing its damage while also healing it back up a little bit you can use it on the fangs to gain even more life so there's just a lot of great uses out of gems in this deck that leads me to to favorite over the one-time barrier effects of similar statted units then we have three copies of Laurent Protégé. He's actually phenomenal in this deck, despite his low attack. We can use things like Mountain Goat to make him even more powerful to trade with more things. But also, just in general, uh, a 2-4 means he's not going to die to a lot of combats, or he's going to have to take a couple of hits to die. And he can catch things like Lucian and kill them very easily, so that's also another great advantage of him. So he's just a really well-statted challenger that's just a great utility piece for the deck. And then we have a one of, of Mentor of the Stones. It's not a huge card for what we're trying to do, but there are a lot of things that can be really good here, like uh, supporting stuff like Taric to boost them, or just boosting the damage output of other things, like Challengers, if you can do like a Mentor and then have it swing the lore and Protégé. Protégé is going to take over that game really quickly. And then he'll generate a bunch of gems when he dies, which can uh, fast level a Taric, or again, just use all those benefits that were the same with the Mountain Goat. So it's just really a good utility card that we don't mind having the one of. And then we have three copies of the Fangs. This is an all-star in the deck because it gains us life into the aggro matchups. It also generates us a fairly good Celestial card, so that's a really great catch-all. Crescent Strike can be really good in certain matchups, same with Equinox, and then obviously stuff like Serpent or the Charger can be very, very good in this deck, especially uh, Charger can actually kind of be a win condition with all the pump spells and Mentor and stuff like that. You can actually make it really take over a game, so the Celestial's going to get you a fair amount of value in our deck, and then you have that life gain for balancing out the, against the decks that are a little bit faster than us. Finally, three copies of Screeching Dragon, kind of a mid-range classic. It's just incredibly well statted, and Fury's going to make it get bigger and bigger and kind of undo a lot of the damage it takes as well, so that's really, really strong. Combine it with something like Toughness off Taric and can, can really take games over, and especially it's really great for Golden Aegis on Taric and swinging with Screeching Dragon as well. That can gain you so much value. And we have a number of things like Concerted Strike and Single Combat that uh, can really make that Fury pay, up, pay huge dividends. So just a really great utility card that can slowly uh, wear our opponent's board down, potentially without losing anything ourselves. As for the spell package, we have three copies of Pale Cascade. It's just a great value card, even though it's only a plus one, plus one now. The fact that it draws us a card so we don't uh, lose out on card advantage there. And often, one health can actually make a huge difference with our deck. And same for one power. We have so many uh, challengers that... You know, Fleet Feather and Laurent Protégé both only have two power. And three power is a fairly big power point or power swing, so... Being able to get that one extra power onto them for an attack is actually fairly big into a lot of matchups, so it's just a great value card all around. Similar sense, three copies of Sharp Sight, same thing. It's just really good, especially combining with our challengers to kill something that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise, or just keeping valuable units alive. It can also be really, really good with Taric to always Sharp Sight the Taric so Taric doesn't die, but then he'll also copy it onto whoever he swings with. So it's a really good way for breaking symmetry, making sure that you're still coming out ahead on board presence. And then it can also catch elusives that, uh, are pretty scary, like the Great Beyond or something like that, that we wouldn't otherwise be able to deal with, so it can help us uh, be able to block things like that. 
Then we have three copies of single combat, the old uh, Demacius standard for removal. Our deck's really, really good at using this because we do have a lot of high health units like Screeching Dragon, Protege, Taric. Um, it can be very good with Garen as well to level them up in one single turn. So we just have a lot of things that are fairly resilient that can uh, make this pretty one-sided so that we're not actually losing our own thing. And then just in general, it's a cheap way to deal with something that even if we are losing a unit, we just have to deal with it right now. So it's a nice way to deal with that as well. And then again, one of the uh, biggest cards in the deck, the three copies of Golden Aegis. As I mentioned, this is the primary combo of the deck. It can get us those extra attacks. With Taric, it's super busted. And it's good for even uh, just helping level up Garen a bit faster. So even if you don't have the Taric, you can always Golden Aegis Garen uh, the turn after you play him. And a swing again, level him up right then and there. He can swing safely because he has that barrier. So it's just a really good valuable card that uh, kind of gives us an advantage over other mid-range decks or really against control as well by getting us those extra attacks they're not ready for while also protecting our stuff. And then we have three copies of Concerted Strike, arguably one of the best removal spells in Demacia because it is one-sided and it can catch some really big things that you wouldn't be able to deal with otherwise by combining the power of two of your units. So just really good valuable card and as I mentioned it can power level your Taric as well, it can power level your Garen by getting you that extra attack as well, it's just all sorts of good in the deck. And finally, three copies of Star Shaping. I've spoken at length at times at how broken I think this card is, and this is definitely where it's going to be the mildest, but we have a lot of value we can get out of Star Shaping, like keeping a Taric alive, keeping a Garen alive, keeping a Screeching Dragon alive. And then it's also going to come with that crazy wind condition, which is the primary reason we're running Star Shaping in this deck. It can help us against those aggro matchups by making up for the damage they did earlier, but primarily it's here for getting those really crazy closeout cards if uh, the opponent's gumming up the board, or if it's a control deck where Great Beyond or Immortal Fire are really going to take over the game against them, so... It's just there as a supreme utility card that finds us really hard to deal with win conditions. Now, as for some flex spots, there's a number of things you can do here. The first and uh, foremost is probably the Jarvan that I mentioned. A lot of people are running Jarvan instead of Garen. I have my own doubts or qualms with our Jarvan, essentially, because uh, he's only a 6-4, so he's not that bigger, that much bigger than Garen, and since he doesn't have regen, he's not really as resilient as Garen because of that health advantage and the regen. And then in general, like, the barrier can be really good, but you have to jump through a number of hoops to kind of get that barrier a second time, so it's really kind of a one-use barrier. The biggest advantage here is that... Uh, if you're looking to Golden Aegis on your own attack, you can always swing with Taric, pull out the, the Jarvan. Jarvan will pull the biggest thing, so Taric's probably safe. And then you can Golden Aegis onto Taric after that and essentially get uh, three attacks in on that one turn. So that's really, really potent. And the fact that Jarvan kind of works really well as a removal on a stick, but that only works for that first attack. Cataclysm can also be kind of good for getting you a bunch of free attacks by using Cataclysm with Taric and then copying it onto something else. That can be good for generating those extra attacks, but Taric's not something you really want to challenge with a lot. Um, so that's kind of where it can be a little bit sketchier to go that route. So personally, I think Garen takes over a game more than Jarvan will, but it is a real uh, consideration to make. If you are going to go the Jarvan route, there's a number of other changes that are worth considering as well. And that's either swapping the Fleet Feather Tracker or just finding another way to get more units in the deck and getting three copies of the Penitent Squire in there. That way you have a few more ways to give Challenger to things, possibly level up that Jarvan or uh, give him Barrier again, things like that. So it's a really good value unit essentially for for just making sure that the attacks are always good for you. You can even use it to give Taric a challenger just so that he gets blocked by their weakest unit and you don't risk him. Um, other than that, King Jarvan's a big include. It would probably replace the star shapings in this case, but if you're going to run Jarvan, then having another way to draw Jarvan out of your deck is always nice, and if you already have him out, it gives a challenger and scout to all your units, so that can be a huge blowout against a lot of decks and just get you even more attacks. So if you are going to run Jarvan, you should probably run King Jarvan as well because he, he really kind of pushes the deck over the top in that respect as well. And then a kind of weirder include that I've seen some people run that you could consider then is um, some number of Zenith Blades. Now, Zenith Blade can be good even with the Garen version because giving Garen Overwhelm can actually be pretty brutal. And again, it's really great with Taric because you can use Zenith Blade on Taric, swing with him, copy him onto something else, and now Taric has Overwhelm. 
the thing he supported has overwhelm. It can really do some crazy busted things, but generally speaking, I think it's a little too greedy to include in the deck and just kind of messes with our consistency too much for me to run it. But it would be really good with Jarvin because he has six power and giving him two extra health is also incredible. So he it, it does gain more value in the Jarvin build. And then as for some just general uh, things you can change, you can always run Bright Steel Protector instead of the Mountain Go, or try to move around some cards, drop some spells or something to get in Bright Steel Protector as well. Obviously, it's going to do some great value for us. Using it to, say, protect your Taric so that he can swing without putting himself at risk can be very, very good. And in general, just giving barrier to something like a Screeching Dragon or a Lornit protege or the fangs can get you a lot of value so it's definitely a good card to consider but i personally value mountain go and the spells more than it but it's definitely something that you can really really run and then something you can place that one of mentor of the stones with is you can go with one of vanguard sergeant we kind of have a big board presence but sometimes we're kind of on only one to two units so that's where mentor is going to be worth a little bit more but if you do manage to build a big board state vanguard sergeant can do some real work with that might of demacia so that's something to consider as well i tend to prefer mentor because no matter what happens we're going to get some good value out of it because we can use those gems we can use that support it's all really good with Taric, so i find it to be a little more useful for the deck than that uh, might of demacia but it is something worth considering and then probably one of the best changes you can make and something i've i've considered messing around with a lot in my first versions of the deck did run two copies of this is sithri the bold she's a really great finisher for any demacia deck and we are definitely no exception giving uh fearsome to everything can be really good for closing out and essentially uh really winning the game when we're struggling against the uh, decks that have kind of gummed up the board so in that case, there's a number of ways you can go about it. Probably what I would consider the most is dropping a copy of Star Shaping and dropping that one of Mentor of the Stones to jam in two Sithrias, but you can always drop uh, all the Star Shapings for three Sithrias. You could drop, drop like a Star Shaping and a Concerted Strike, but generally speaking, if you're going to go up things on the, on the top end of the curve, you're probably going to want to drop some number of Star Shapings because they are primarily there as a win condition, so... If you're going to replace them with Sithria as another win condition, that's probably the best way to go about it. As for the basic mulligans for the deck, you kind of want to look for a good curve out. Spells are really hard to keep if you don't have a solid uh, unit core. Um, Garen's a little bit risky to keep, but there's a number of matchups where you know he's going to really do some work. So that can be good. You'll generally keep a Taric and a Golden Aegis if you see it. But you may want to even mulligan that if uh, the rest of your cards are very high cost because you really do need to be doing things early with this deck or you're going to get out-tempoed fairly quickly. So if I have a Fleet Feather and a Mountain Goat, I'll keep that pretty much 100% of the time regardless of the matchup. It's good into control for gas pedaling them. It's great into aggro for having early bodies. So it's just generally speaking really, really strong. So against aggro, you are looking for that good early curve. You're looking for that Fleet Feather into Mountain Goat. Fangs is an easy keep against aggro because it can really do a lot of work. And it's actually fairly easy for us to keep it alive using things like Sharp Sight, Golden Aegis, Pale Cascade, uh, etc. Just to keep it from dying to our opponent. And if we can get multiple attacks in, it's going to very quickly gain us back all the health we lost. So really good in the matchup. Star Shaping's kind of okay, but I generally wouldn't keep it in the opener unless you really, uh, unless you have a lot of early game cards and you're just looking for a solid uh, late game heal, then I would keep it in that, that case. Against uh, mid-range decks, you're going to really want challengers because that's going to be very good for breaking the, the symmetry, and then things like Sharp Sight are also going to be good for the same reasons. Taric's going to be good for just giving toughness to help with that, and Garen... Or, yeah, and then Garen is really, really good in that matchup, too, because Garen is very hard for a lot of mid-range decks to, to deal with. Things like Concerted Strike and Star Shaping are really good, too, but I generally won't keep them in my opening hand unless I have that really strong uh, early curve. But uh, just in general, you just kind of want to make sure that you're out board controlling them, essentially. So anything that helps you do that, that's what you're looking for in mid-range. Against control, star shaping is keepable here because that will give you a fairly consistent way to deal with their, their uh, late game and close out. But uh, essentially, you just want that great early curve again. As always, things like Protégé are actually fairly good, even though they might not be challenging things often. They're going to be very hard for your opponent to remove because of that 4 health. 
Mountain Goat's also uh, less susceptible to things like Vile Feast, so it's very strong too. Fleet Feather Tracker's great for that early game damage, but it will probably die fairly easily. Garen can be very hard for them to remove too, same with Screeching Dragon, because they're high health, and in Garen's case, the fact that he keeps regening back. And then the Taric Golden Ages combo is really great for just gas puddling them on a turn that they're not ready for. So just look to try and run them down as quick as you can, and anything like rally effects are really great for that as well. But things like single combat and concerted strike are going to be significantly worse. So that's kind of how you want to play that matchup. And that's the deck for this week's episode. So if you like the deck, there's a deck code and a deck link in the description below. And let's just jump straight into some rank matches and see how we do. Hmm, Kindred Nasus, okay. He has played a lot of Nasus, so uh, obviously he's probably played Thresh Nasus, because he has more than Kindred, right? <laughs> um, man, maybe this deck should be running Hush, shouldn't it? Hmm. Okay, I don't know about this. Concerted Strike actually could have been a good answer, so... Maybe it would have been good to keep that. Ooh, we're taking a we're taking a chunk early. Ugh, not good. Be pretty quick and easy for our opponent to get us to the point that uh that Nasus fling is just lethal. Although Taric into Garen's not a bad curve for us. But the fact that we're doing nothing in our first two turns, definitely not ideal. But he didn't play anything, so that means most damage he does here is two. So that's not bad. Worst case scenario... Okay, that's... That's not that bad for us. I mean, it's not great for us either, but... Is he playing the aggro variant that has Ravenous Butcher? Because that's really bad for us if he is. Okay, it does not seem to be. Alright, we take another chunk here. We do have Fangs coming up, potentially. Hmm. I mean, this Concerted Strike could be good, eventually. That gives tough to him as well, right? Yeah, I think that's fine. Because he doesn't actually die to that. Maybe we should have used Pale Cascade first, but... Well, there's a risk here, but... Because he could have Withering Whale. Yeah, I can play this Garen. I have never forgotten... There you are. Hmm. It's a lot of damage potentially. Okay, well we can get a leveled up Garen out of this. I can't take that much damage though. We can potentially get a level up Garen out of this. <laughs> Not a guarantee, though. He does have to Vile Feast in response to this for Garen to die. Okay. Leveled up Garen. But we are going down to very little health. So that is definitely sketchy. Star shaping's good. Star shaping's very good. Uh, Crescent Strike's also good. Hmm. If I swing with Taric, he's dead, though, no matter what happens, right? Okay, well, he doesn't have a Nasus yet. Not this turn. Is this worth it? You know, I think I think it is. I think it's worth it. It's questionable for sure, because we kind of wanted this for Nasus, but right now we're kind of looking for the uh, 
the concerted strike to kill Nasus. Although I don't know how likely that is to be, considering he'll be able to do right of uh, negation. Unless he does something to stop this Crescent Strike. If he writes right now, that's phenomenal. Oh, And he's destroying a Mana Gem for it? That's crazy. Well, I mean, this is a free attack for sure. Do we swing with this too? I don't think so. I think we take the free attack. I mean, if I can get Golden Ages off, that's incredible. But if he slaps a Nasus, then obviously we kill the Nasus. I think we still can. Okay, no Nasus this turn. See what he has. This is risky. Because if he has a kill spell, he can kill that. Potentially. But if it's like Withering Whale, we're fine. Because we can uh, Pale Cascade. Okay. So we block here. Block here. This is risky, but... I think this is our highest possible play here. Because it potentially gains his life twice. He can't Atrocity either. How many pump spells could he have? Not many, right? The deck doesn't really run pump spells. And then this passes it back to me. So then I can Rally... Again, do that. I don't want to swing with Garen, though, because then Garen could potentially die. I'm fine with Tarek dying here to clear the way. But we don't want to risk this Garen regardless. We're in pretty good shape here, because even with the trade here, like, this gets to swing again and gain life again. Unless he Vile Feast clears this, and then they'll trade. But then I get to level up Taric, which is pretty disgusting. Okay, so they can't take damage or die this round. Yeah, he has to trade with, with Taric, but then I gain a bunch of life. So the game's pretty doomed from that aspect, too. And he's actually just straight up dead if he can't play any units. Because uh, I can just full swing and he's dead that way. This has been a weird game, but... Kinda... Kinda doing alright. He's thinking. I mean, Withering Whale would keep him alive, even without blockers. And I feel like there's a good chance he does have that, based on the way he was playing previously. Because it looked like he was considering blocking this, and that's only really the right play if you do have the Withering Whale or something to strip that. Oh, that's a little unfortunate. Well, that's a little unfortunate for sure. Kind of wanted the extra Garen Rally effects. Okay. So I can't actually... It's not worth open swinging here. Alright, what's he got? He could have Withering Whale. That's still the big thing that we're playing around. If he plays Nasus, he's dead. That's not a Nasus, so he can live. We are kind of setting ourselves up to get uh, blown out by a Withering Whale, but... I assume he has Nasus. He's drawn a lot of cards. So if he hasn't found one of his champions, that's pretty crazy. If he plays Kindred, he's probably dead. Hmm. That's a bit unfortunate. We do gain a little more life off that, though. So 
So we can't kill our opponent this turn. But we can kill all of his units. I suppose. But how close is he to just killing us with Nasus? I think fairly close, right? But this is a sketchy one. I really wish you could see how many things he's slain on here, since it's basically pretty critical. Mm, this can win us the game, depending on what our opponent does. Um, so I can get that to six. All right, and that should be game. We still have Concerted Strike. That's the crazy part. We just gemmed plus Golden Ages, plus we have Concerted Strike up. So I really don't know what he could do to get out of this at this point. I have Lethal on board if he can't play other blockers. Uh, strike with that, then strike with that, so Fury. He can't cast right, he's he's done. Game is over. I get to open swing after this too, so yeah. Alright, yeah, Concerted Strike, pretty good against that. And uh, not a bad game in general. Garen definitely came pretty big there, so... Promising start for uh, the Garen considerations. Not uh, not bad, and that was a real deck. We'll take that, absolutely. On to the next. Alright, Lucian Azir. This can be sketchy. That is a good aggro deck. Hmm. This is gonna be too... Yeah, no. We're gonna mulligan the whole hand. None of that is particularly great. This is fantastic. Oh, this is phenomenal. This is a great curve, and it's got lifesteal at the top end. That's perfect. See what we see. So We're willing to tra trade with this Dune Keeper, 100%. We're not willing to trade with this Sand Soldier. There's a downside to trading with Dune Keeper, is that obviously if we trade with Dune Keeper, we can't threaten the Lucian next turn. But if we let him keep Dune Keeper and he doesn't have a turn two play, then turn three is is way better if it has Dune Keeper. I mean, he should attack with at least a Sand Soldier. Alright, well, we said we would trade, so we'll trade. We take two, but uh, his board is cleared. I don't know exactly how worth it that was, but... Oh, well, Golden Aegis. That'll be good eventually. Especially if we can combine this with the Fangs to gain a bunch of life in a single turn. Um, I think we're fine taking that trade. <laughs> Apparently so is he. Okay, he's got another one. It's going to be a fast level of this year, potentially. Ooh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Not a problem. We're perfectly fine with that trade. Although, if he's doing that, he should also swing with the Zier for the one extra damage. Not that it makes a huge difference, but obviously that's just uh, better. Worst thing he could do is swing with uh, just the Zier and not the Fleet Feather. I mean, we are taking a lot of damage very quickly, so that's the best thing going for our opponent. But we do have this Fangs to follow up with. And Concerted Strike isn't especially phenomenal right now considering the fact that we don't have uh we don't have two units we're just gonna have this one fangs but i'm not terribly concerned about that yet the fact we've only taken five damage and my opponent's down to three cards is fairly solid for us best thing that fangs can pull for us is probably the serpent that's what we're really looking for we'll see if we even get to swing with fangs next turn there's a very real possibility that we won't be able to, but we w we'll see. 
Because we do need to keep this alive more than being aggressive. We're at 15 health, we don't need to be particularly proactive with our life gain. The biggest thing we need is we need this body for Concerted Strike. Hopefully it finds us another unit. Again, Serpent being the best one, but... Hopefully it finds us a unit. That's what we really need. Okay, well, by that logic, we do have to take a unit. The question is, which one is worth more to us? I think Messenger for the card draw. Okay, not worth not worth attacking. We do not want this trade. I'd rather pass this turn and uh, bank the man, bank the <laughs> the one mana and keep our unit alive. Okay, I want to play Tarek because Tarek is worth a lot. Um, is it worth it to play something like the Messenger? Okay. I think so. Because we could just give this away, and then we bank full mana. Okay. Azir is leveled up. And that is very unfortunate for us, but... Block like this. And then I think we just gem here for a little more damage. Hopefully he doesn't have a rally spell himself. That would actually be pretty big. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, we called it. Okay. That's definitely unfortunate. Because this is lethal, right? So we have to block... So we have to block here, and we have to keep this alive. And it's unfortunate the order in which we did stuff. Okay. We're still alive, for the time being. The big problem here is that I can no longer Taric plus Rally. Which we really kind of needed that. I'm ready to shine. Don't get in my way. Okay, that's terrifying. Um, hmm. Okay, well, he didn't have a rally that turn, so that is good for us. Sharp sight is actually phenomenal. Hmm. How many things can we do here? So I can do this plus sharp sight, but then I can't concerted. Okay. Okay, Golden Age is here. He's gonna try to kill this. Actually, he's going to successfully kill this, in theory. Wait, hang on. I can actually concerted strike. All right, let's see if that works. It did. Perfect. Now, what do we want to do here? Because this, this loses us Taric. Loses us this Taric, I suppose. Unyielding. Interesting. Who blesses you? Okay, so we do lose the Taric. And even more unfortunately, uh, that strip shield off this, or barrier off this. Okay, well, this is uh, the best possible outcome for my opponent. If I do this, I'm dead. If I do this, I'm dead. If I do this, I'm dead. That, I'm dead. That, we're dead. Yeah. 
That's game. Unfortunate. We almost had it there, but my opponent had just enough in the tank. That one rally spell was really the backbreaker for us, but unfortunate. Very, 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 very close, though. So not uh, not too bad, but on to the next. Hmm. Shen Jarvan, huh? This ought to be interesting. Denai's going to make Golden Aegis kind of hard to pull off, probably. But... We do have some decently statted things, and our early game might actually be stronger than theirs, funny enough. Especially if this is running like the standard list. The standard list has gotten a lot weaker in terms of uh, early action, early troops. Let's see if he has a two drop. Alright. Um, it's probably worth just swinging. Can't do much about it, and we get a ton of damage out. And it, it's possible we could have killed that this turn, but the reason I swung is that that could have been a sharp sight river shaper, and then we lose Protege, he doesn't lose river shaper. And then we're just sad panda. Um... Hmm... Yeah, we'll take the hit. That has some very obvious, uh... Unfortunates. If he goes, like, Concerted Strike right now, kill him? Yeah. Alright, well, he burned all of his mana, at least. But the downside is we could've used Single Combat next, next uh, turn to protect him, so... The fact that that didn't happen is a little unfortunate. Actually, you know what? It's probably worth playing Fangs first. Yup. That's what we were looking for. Now the question is, do we Equinox this River Shaper to deny him one more card draw? Or do we just... We just go for it. Okay. Sure. Let's be a little smarter. This has some obvious downsides, potentially, but... Kind of assuming we're gonna lose this. Yeah, okay, yep. Okay, we're not gonna lose both, though. Or, well, we're gonna lose both, but he's going to lose that. That's the important thing. We wanted that to die. Now, it is a little bit bad that we're letting him draw so many spells. That, that can definitely be problematic for us. See if that works. It's a bold play for me to go to Equinox that. Okay. Hmm. So I can do this and trade both into him? Is that worth it, though? We're gonna go for it. I don't know that that was worth it, but... Who does not know the name yeah, we're gonna go for Screeching Dragon here. Break their spirits and their swords! Run them through! Hmm. No, nah, it's not worth losing. A gift from the river folk. I could have killed that, but I would have lost my whole board for that, and it's just it just isn't worth it. All right, Let's see what he's got. He's used a deny up. Hmm. 
Okay, well, I mean, in response, this is probably, it's probably better to single combat than, uh, do something else, because if I concerted strike, like, concerted strike's gonna be a better way to kill something bigger later. Well, I mean, if it's gonna be like that. <laughs> if it's gonna be like that. What's up, bud? Chick, chick, boom, I have lethal. <laughs> oh, that was such a sweet win. <laughs> um, was it worth casting all those things? Man, I don't know what he's got going on. It's 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 worth it's worth doing something there. I mean, we didn't lose anything by doing that, so honestly, it was just for the best to try and get as much damage as we could in case he had some miraculous way of gaining health, like health potion. But, uh, yeah, we'll take a sweet win like that, absolutely. Hmm. Draven Ribbon. Okay, so it's an aggro deck, so we're gonna want, want early game units, and we're gonna want healing. I'm actually tempted to keep this, Garen. Garen matches up fairly well against most of this, but I definitely can't keep both five costs here. So, Concerted Strike we're going to pitch anyways. It can be definitely great for killing, like, Riven or even Draven, but Riven's going to be the higher priority. But, I'm tempted to keep Garen just for the big meaty body, especially since we're combining it with a one and a two cost. So, this already kind of matches up well against what our opponent's trying to do. That's not likely to be great to have a second one. I say not likely, but... There is a non-zero number of opportunities for a uh, a judgment to win us the game, especially when our opponent doesn't have anything uh, turn one. That means we're going to have a, a bit more time, potentially. All right, well, we missed out on three points of damage, but that's fine. It's, Draven time. it's definitely not worth trying to trade with that. <laughs> Not right now, anyways. Not right now. Uh, next turn with Taric, like Sharp Sight Taric, maybe. That's worth considering. I'm ready to shine. Ironically, things are actually going very well for us right now. Ah, boo! Boo earns. I think we pass and bank the mana. I don't have to be super aggressive right now. I was thinking about playing Garen this turn, but I think it's better just to go for the Taric, uh, the Taric Golden Ages turn. I don't think he's uh, very likely to kill us this turn. How likely is this to work for him? Because he's definitely going for Whirling Death here. Oh, he's going to go for Mystic Shot. Okay. I mean, this is super unfortunate for us. We'll see if he can kill Taric, because obviously things get much worse for us if he can kill Taric. Okay, yeah, so he can kill Taric. Yeah, that really sucks for us then. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. But he did just burn a lot. But he does have a very massive, uh, massive Draven. <laughs> he can't rally, at least, though. Well, we went we went for the sweet play. I suppose we should have just let him hit us. That was that was very greedy of us. He actually has that dealing 5 damage? Dear lord. Let's see if he has a way to kill him. That alone is not enough. Does he have another mystic shot? Stay 
I think I can still judgment this turn, which is what we really wanted. Hmm. Let's do this. Wait, what? It oh, it was created. Okay. <laughs> Are you scared yet? Okay, we're just gonna pass. We have the potential judgment turn. The reason we're being cautious is it's very possible for my opponent to go Whirling Death plus uh, Whirling Death plus Sharp Resolve, and then we lose the the uh, the Garen. Hold fast. Let's see what he goes for. Okay. Unfortunate, but it was the smartest play I could go for. Hmm. Can I risk? Okay. Okay, and then we'll play Screeching Dragon here, I think. Because that still lets me... Although maybe Fangs plus Concerted Strike is better. No, as it turns out, it is. <laughs> Sweet. To serve the greater good. Past is a burden we must learn to bear. Yeah, I think this is worth it. Because we can still bank this sharp sight. And now we level up Garen. Finally, peace. These hands no metal and magic. I mean, what's the chances that Garen dies here? Not super high. Oof. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. If I can land this judgment, the game is very over, though. Well, I can judgment plus this. the first of many foes. I mean, we're gonna go for this and see if he has the Whirling Death lethal. Ooh, and that's the game. And that's the game. No and we get to swing now. <laughs> and that's the Garen difference. That's the Garen difference, is that sometimes Judgment will just win a game out of nowhere, and they never play around it because nobody plays main deck Judgment, and they forget it's a champion spell. Oh, that was so beautiful. Oh, the Garen difference, the Garen difference. We will 100% take that on the next. <laughs> Lucian is here, huh? Rematch time, boys. Mm, I like this. That can randomly be good, too. The question is, can I even play a Garen? Like, can I keep this in good conscience? Probably not. And I'm actually... I'm not sure that single combat is great, either. Single combat's good if I keep the Garen, but I don't think I can keep the Garen. Yeah, no. No, no, no. Let's be smart. This is good. Ooh, ooh. That's terrible. Fleet Feather plus Fangs is good, but we really wanted something like a Mountain Goat. Okay, no turn one play out of our opponent? I mean, that's really good. Although, unfortunately, we are going to have a hard time giving our Fleet Feather Challenger. Star Shaping is very good. That's a lot of life to gain. Okay, my opponent has done nothing so far, so that's sweet. Um, 
is it worth it to play Mountain Goat here? Or do I just go for the damage? Because this is free damage. Okay. Is this worth it? I don't know that the answer is yes. Okay. There was a lot of ways that went wrong for us. That's the big thing. But him losing a scout unit is definitely worth it. Even with one more coming. Actually, Fang's very good here, potentially. Um. Hmm. All of these have a lot of potential value. This is the boldest one for me to take. I've got your back. Okay, that's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Okay, I think we use this gem. We want to keep that alive. And now he can't kill it this turn. That was foolish. I mean, I get what he's going for here, but... But now I can just block here. And I mean, he was going to lose that health anyways. I could still kill this with Screeching Dragon. Well, he's down to three cards and we're at 19 health, so that's about as good as this matchup can ever be for us, so... I mean, that's sweet, at least. Sharp Sight's really good. You just saw how good it was with the Fangs. He's down to only one Blinding Assault left in his deck, so that's also sweet. That was an easy decision. I killed this, he can Sharp Sight and trade. <laughs> Fleet Feather, he's got nothing. I mean, that's sketchy. That's sketchy, especially since we don't have, uh... We don't have, uh, the Equinox to silence it, but I'm still thinking about this Moon Silver Star Shaping. Or... We can go for... This. Yeah, I like that. Alright. Maybe it wasn't worth doing it in that order. Okay. <laughs> wow, that actually got a concession out of them? Holy crap! Well, that went substantially better than the last time. <laughs> I think that was a little bit of a an early scoop, but we were in pretty good shape there because we kept stabilizing. So, yeah, I mean, we'll take the win, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so how do we do in our matches? Um, another small one this week, smaller than I'd hoped. Um, just didn't have as much time to play this week as I had hoped for. Um, not so much that uh, last week where I was playing one other deck, Deep Monsters, realized it was terrible, and then switched decks to the Nasus Fling. This week, I kind of knew early on that I wanted to try the Taric deck. I talked it up pre-patch, and I had seen some people messing around with Taric Jarvan and kind of the list's resurgence, so I thought, you know what, let's give it a try. But ultimately, I decided to go the Garen route, as you see, and uh, the big reason for that is that Garen can be really uh, oppressive when you get him leveled up. And also, his champion spell is, in my opinion, substantially better than Cataclysm in this uh, particular deck, but just in general. And we, boy, do we get to see that pay off and pay dividends um, with that really sweet game. But I played a total of six games. You saw five of them. Um, 
I did play a handful of games on this deck last patch, not in ranked, but I did play them in normals, just messing around with the deck. Plus, I played some games on Jarvan Tarek, just to see which one I thought was going to be better, and ultimately, I felt that the Garen version had felt better. So, that is why I went with it, but I did have a handful of games on this outside of it, but I only have the 6 in ranked, and again, 5 and 1. Which is way better than I expected the deck to do, especially when the second game I played was against Lucian Azir. So the only repeat matchup we had was Lucian Azir, which you saw us go 1-1. One one. But the game you didn't see was also Lucian Azir, which is part of the reason why you didn't see it. Um, it's definitely going to be in my weekly highlights, though, because I leveled up Tarek in that one. And it was a very... Very down to the wire, but I just ran him out of resources without running out myself and then top decked a beautiful spell at a perfect time and just absolutely shredded my opponent. So that was absolutely sweet. Um, chef's kiss perfect. And ultimately, tune one in the matchup, which honestly, aggro is the decks I was most scared about. And we only found, well, actually, we found lifesteal in both uh, Lucian Azir games you saw, I think. It's just uh, they got off to the races fast in the first one. And we, well, it was the Relentless Pursuit was really what turned the outcome in that one. Because they got off to the races very quick with the uh, last game I played against them. And they were also running the Senna variant. They had leveled up all three of their Senna's at different points. They had a leveled up Senna, and then they got another leveled up Senna, and then they got another leveled up Senna. That was one Lucian kill leveling up two Senna's, and then another Lucian kill leveling up another Senna. Like, that's how crazy their their things went in that game, and I won. So check out my weekly highlights this week, and you'll see that absolutely ridiculous game. It was, uh, it was, it was fun. One of my favorite games I've played in a long time, and it's just uh, very surprising. I did not expect us to hold up that well against that deck, but... The deck can definitely do it. We're kind of a we kind of a low curve mid range deck with a lot of low cost things. So actually, our matchup against them is better than you'd expect. What I'm really surprised about is that we beat Shen Jarvin because my kind of concerns with this deck, although I did preemptively try to work against that with the star shaping in the list, but my my biggest concern was with our top end being Garen, the Fangs, and Tarek. Garen's really the only one there that's super good, so the rest of them are, are really good in this deck, but, like, the Fangs is a 3-2. So I kind of expected us to have a hard time against other mid-range decks, especially mid-range decks with much, much better late-game plans, which is exactly what Shen Jarvan is. So the fact that we blew that deck out of the water is very surprising. I did not expect that to be so easy. Um, I thought they were going to have a much easier time giving us a run for our money. So that was really, really surprising. Really, really cool. Because I, I thought star shaping was going to be pretty mandatory for winning that matchup. Although, ultimately, star shaping's there actually for the control matchups in case we ever run into one. Now, we didn't run into it this time around. Um, but basically, it's there for those really penultimate win conditions, as I said. And we didn't end up needing any of them in our six games today. But... That life gain and the fact it could pull a win condition, I definitely still stand by including it in the list. There's nothing I kind of would want more than it. It is kind of one of our best late game insurance policies. So, and I don't think we have to really lose much to go with it. Since if you compare it to like the Jarvan list, the place it's taking is King Jarvan. And King Jarvan's obviously useless in our deck um, because he's just like a mediocre statted unit, essentially, without Jarvan's to draw and Jarvan's to buff the team. So... Um, ultimately, it, it was, uh, the deck surprised me way more than I thought. And we got a lot of varied games in, is the nice part. Which is part of the reason you didn't see the third uh, Lucian Azir game, because I didn't want to do another Lucian Azir game. I'd rather keep the nice spread of at least four different decks. But clearly, Lucian Azir is a big deck right now, and we went 2-1. and one. I would have to play the matchup a lot more before I could confidently tell you that we're favored in it. We got the edge this time around, but I think it's very possible for that deck to cause us problems. But with the three copies of Star Shaping and the three copies of the Fangs, we do have a lot of ways to gain life. And Fangs can actually pull a lot of very good cards for us. And thankfully, and this is the big thing that gives us a, a nice edge in that matchup, is we have a ton of ways to kill Lucian and kill him fairly effectively. Arguably, the last game I played should have been the worst because they were running Senna, which I don't think most of the decks run. So 
that punishes us for killing Lucian, but even that wasn't enough. But we have Fleet Feather, we have the uh, Laurent Protégé, we have the Dragon. All of these are really, really good for killing Lucian. And in many cases with Protégé and the Dragon, we don't even lose them unless they have a buff. And if we have another buff to match it, then it really doesn't matter. So that, I think, is the biggest advantage that we have, is that it's, it's a lot less safe for them and their Lucian than other matchups. So couple that with our life gain, and that does really improve the matchup for us than uh, would be expected otherwise. So really sweet, awesome games, fun way that that turned out. And yeah, uh, it's a fun deck. Um, I think I'd hate playing against it uh, when you get that Taric Golden Aegis turn, but a lot more people are getting re- like, used to that or ready for that line of play so it's a lot less effective than it used to be i think but generally speaking it's still really oppressive when it goes off so i i'm not enthused about the idea of running into into mirror matchups and all that but it's definitely not going to be the worst deck to play against there's decks that have been much much less fun like fiora decks particularly come to mind so it's a, it's a really neat deck and a cool one to give a try. I think it's in a fairly good spot on this patch because some of the the more oppressive decks have gotten nerfed. So it made room for kind of fringe niche decks like this. And then obviously Golden Aegis really pushed Taric over the top to being potentially, potentially top tier, to be quite frank. So yeah, I highly recommend giving out the deck a try if uh, you like mid-range decks or you just want something really new or maybe you've been waiting for Tarek's moment in the sun and this is definitely the best we've ever seen him. I thoroughly believe that. He is he is better in this deck than Tarek has ever been. So definitely give it a try. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment below, and subscribe for more Legends of Rune Tarek content.